Welcome to another episode of Millennials to Millionaires. Before we get started, we got something very, very special for you guys. Extremely special. If you look in the description below, we have a free, I repeat, free real estate investor's guide. Make sure you click the link in the description and get access to it right away. Remember, it's free. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh man, not again. Oh man, <laughs> oh, oh man, man. we're going, we're going yeah. back, back. <laughs> not again, <laughs> not again. <laughs> yes, again. Okay. We're going back to back. It was the truth. That's a fact. <laughs> Yo, so you guys just came to Toronto. First time since, what is it, 08, 09? 09 yeah. for me. Yeah. 09. Yeah. yeah. Back to back sold out shows. Never been done before. It's unprecedented. In the history of financial literacy, making noise across the entire nation, not even in t Toronto, making noise across the entire nation of Canada. How does that feel, man? Like, did you guys even expect this? Kind of love from the six? <laughs> yeah, shout out to the six. Now, it's vibes. You know, we knew that we had big support out here. We know we had a, a strong base, but you never really know how how real the love is until you actually get there in person. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we actually knew once we put the tickets on sale, once we put the tickets on sale and it sold out without us even putting a flyer up, we like, oh, this is different. And then mm -hmm. we did a, a second show and then that sold out like in a week. So I'm like, all right, this is crazy. And then just getting up here, you know, everybody's just been showing so much love, you guys, the whole team. So it's just been, it's been a really dope experience so far for sure. Yeah, once when we started this journey, 2019, you know, as soon as we started putting out content, people were like, yo, come to Toronto. Mm -hmm. We need it. You got to come to Toronto. And uh, the moment's just kind of been building. And so to see, you know, two sold out shows is incredible. But that's always been on the vision board was like, yo, let's spread this brand international mm -hmm. because what we're talking about really is not an American based issue, it's a world issue. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we've been to the UK, we went to Africa. But what's the closest international place? Right. <laughs> right. We're literally down the street. Yeah, yeah. Down the, off the street from us, like an hour yeah. plane ride. Yeah. Your next door neighbors. Your next door neighbors. You know what I mean? Like, we, we, like you said, we've been up here uh, a, a, a few times, and it's always been love. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't come with business. We just came for just leisure, Vibes. right? It hadn't been earned at that point. But, uh, <laughs> like that. but uh, yeah, man, to see the love is, is, is overwhelming. It's, it's dope. That's amazing. So let's start by talking about assets over liabilities. And I want to start talking about that because me and my brother Twee right here, we are the same, but we're very opposite. <laughs> this guy, he has maybe over 100 pairs of shoes, <laughs> Christian Dior's, this, that, the third, me, I got 12 pairs. You know what I mean? This guy has a crazy collection of watches and stuff. And I'm like, I got one and all my money is in real estate. <laughs> so what I want to know is when it comes to assets over liabilities, I understand you need the drip to kind of build your brand. But at what point is drip an asset or is it a liability? Because I see you, Rashad. I see you. And we do the drip check and I see you every time we step out, you outside. So, like, is drip an asset or a liability? Um, I think that it's definitely, it could be both. Um, and what you refer to, like, lifestyle marketing as far as, like, people use clothes to, like, solidify their brand. Um, and that's one way to go about it. I I just use clothes because I was always doing that my whole life. I was gonna say, like, you know what I mean. So that that's you've been, been a fly guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I never really did it to like you know make people believe that I was somebody that I'm not. It's that's just who I am, really. Mm -hmm. um, but people are you know they do gravitate towards trappings of success, mm -hmm. and you know your appearance is is important. Um, but I think it's it's about being responsible. So that's why it's assets over liabilities, mm -hmm. right? Like we're not like extremists, we're not monks. We don't we don't say, you know, to never have fun, to never spend money, to mm -hmm. never buy clothes. Like, you know, that's how we grew up. That's the culture that we 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 idolize for such a long period of time. But we have to prioritize things. Mm -hmm. So before I buy something, I make sure that I'm investing money first. I can buy it a hundred times over. I'm not spending my last dollar on a sweater. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like if I'm buying clothes, that's like two percent of my total budget mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's not it's not putting me in any financial hardship mm -hmm. and if it is putting me in a financial hardship then it's not time to do it mm -hmm. i'll wait or i just won't do it at all so i think that that's important for people to understand like you know whether it's clothes 
whether it's cars, whether it's, you know, jewelry, watches, you know, we all like nice things. But ultimately what's more important is real estate, is stocks, is mm-hmm. businesses. Like that's more important, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, make sure you take care of that first. Then, you know, you can have a little bit of fun after. Yeah, it, it, the, the, the part that le- got left out is drip responsibly. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. like Coach Prime always says, man, like when, when you look good, you play good. And yeah. when you play good, they pay good. Facts. Right, it's all part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about doing it in moderation. But also I think, you know, we've kind of hit a, a nice spot where we get to educate about some of the things we're doing. And so when we get watches, mm-hmm. there's a lesson in there, right? We talk about the appreciation of a Rolex. Of we talk about gold as a commodity. Mm-hmm. And so where most people just looked at it as a necessity as a, a set, like to being an entertainer, mm-hmm. nah, there's education into it, right? When we get cars, it's like, oh, there's education behind this. Mm-hmm. Yo, you could buy, and, buy or finance, right? Mm-hmm. Or lease. And it's like, all right, well, if you're leasing it and you're not home all the time, like, maybe you can put it on Toro. Mm-hmm. And now you've created a business out of it. Or you can get a Sprinter van and, you know, write that off as a, as a, as a have it as a tax write-off. Mm-hmm. And so there's lessons around it. And so it's like, yeah, we're doing these things, but it could also be education. You know, I mean? even with sneakers, right? Yeah. We've seen kids sure. now in the resale space where that used to be something that was like, ah, oh, you're wasting your money on sneakers mm-hmm. until you realize, wait, there's a resale market for this. Yeah. And kids are making appreciation on it, yeah. right? If I could teach them about appreciation of a shoe, I could teach them about the appreciation of a stock. Mm-hmm. The same principle. Right? Stock X is based on mm-hmm. the stock market. Exactly. If you look at the tickers, each sneaker has its own symbol. It's yeah. the same exact principles. And so there's lessons inside of all of them. Mm-hmm. I think it's all about all about education, right? I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. For me personally, like I feel like I do it because I can, because I buy real estate first and real estate helps me fund other aspects of my lifestyle. And then obviously growing up, I had an older brother. So I grew up in the 90s. So I'm used to, New York was what we idolized, right? <laughs> so we're talking Pelly Pelly, we're talking yeah. Averex jackets, yeah. rock aware, you know, academics, yeah. you know what I mean? So that's what I grew up looking at. And when I see my brother step out, I'm like, okay, he looks good, he feels good, he's gonna do good. You know what I mean? That's, that's just like the law of attraction, right? So in my defense, that's why <laughs> it may seem like overconsumption to some people, yeah. but it's like, you gotta know what you're doing prior to that, right? That's oh, yeah. what it's about. Yeah, yeah. You got a New York swag with you, man. Yeah. I need credit. International. So they say the, the average millionaire has seven streams of income, right? And most people look at that and think, I got to have seven different businesses or I got to have real estate and uh, stocks and crypto and NFTs. And for a lot of people, that's extremely intimidating because... Mm-hmm they have one stream of income and they have their job, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I've seen you guys do, you know, and turn this podcast to a whole media company, how many streams of income do you guys actually have that was built from this? All right, get get your notepads ready. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, 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 we ready. (laughs) That's an up reading Here we go. (laughs) That's an interesting question. Um, You'll find out later why why that's interesting. You'll find out later, but that's interesting that you asked that question. But... It's about squeezing as much juice out of the lemon as possible. Mm-hmm. And that's how we always look at it. Like, you know, it's not necessarily about starting seven different businesses. It's about seven different branches off of one business. Mm-hmm. So, all right, you know, we have Earn Your Leisure, which started as a podcast. So we monetize that on Apple and Spotify with ads. But then it's like, all right, the same content. If we tape it, we can put it on YouTube. So now that's YouTube money as well. And then it's like, all right, if people really like, you know, watching us on YouTube and listening to us, then they might actually want to go to a show. So that started the live experiences where now we travel all over the world and do live experiences. And then it's like, all right, well, if we're going to be talking in front of a camera, we have to wear something. Mm -hmm. So why not wear something that we can actually monetize on and build brand awareness? So hence assets over liabilities, which is, you know, a brand within itself. And then, um, you know, once we got a lot of traction, a lot of buzz, we realized that, you know, we can work with other corporations. So now that leads to corporate sponsorships and corporate partnerships, even coming up here, the, the World Tour is sponsored by Ally, which mm-hmm. is a fintech bank. So it's like, all right, now that's another stream of income off of that. And then we look at it like, all right, the information that we point out there every single day on YouTube and Apple and Spotify and social media, that's free. Um, but what if people want a more hands-on learning experience, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like in the States, we have public school and we have private school. So public school is great and that's for everybody. Private school is a little bit more hands-on. So with hands-on experience, now that's EYL University. That's a subscription-based model, but it's still around the same information, mm-hmm. but it's just more 
more into it, more hands on type of learning experience. So now that's another, you know, and then it's like, all right, as we grow in this, we got social media, like we could probably even start monetizing that. So we can, we can charge for posts. And then it's like, okay, now as we become bigger and we become more notable, people want us to come speak. So that leads to speaking engagements, right? Mm -hmm. Live shows. And then it's like, all right, well, in the future, what, what if we can actually write this into text? Now that leads to a book. And then it's like, all right, well now, what about the world of television? So like, as this over liabilities now, we got a television show with Revolt, right? And then it's like, all right, well, what if we can do a movie? Or what if we can do a documentary? And then it's like, okay, we, we do shows with all of these entrepreneurs. They might have courses. How about having an affiliate program with them? So that's like 12 different streams right there, but that's, <laughs> it's not too far off of what Who's we're coming? currently doing. Yeah. Who's coming? Who's coming, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that's how I think you got to look at it. And that's for any business. Mm -hmm. That's for any business. It's like, it's, if you're a chef, if you have a restaurant, okay, it's not good enough just to serve food. Mm -hmm. Like, why not have a cooking book? If you become an authority in the space, now you can do consultations, mm -hmm. right? And then you can make content for yourself and YouTube. Now, you can have an apron and merch and then you can sell seasoning and then you can do meal prep so now it's like how can you get seven entry, seven streams of income or more out of your business yeah. mm -hmm. and that's true for any career path right like he broke that down for us he just broke it down for a shelf i was doing an education it was like yo i used to talk to people all the time they're like yo, how do you have met so many streams i'm like y'all can do the same thing mm -hmm. you're the authority in space if you're teaching Number one, you could be a tutor. <laughs> number one, you, uh, number two, you can write books, right? You can write lesson plans, mm -hmm. or you can create your own pocket. Like they have these little circle uh, teaching academies where it's like a building like this where there might be students in this building. Well, I'm holding after school programs for mm -hmm. just the people in this building. Mm -hmm. Kids have to go somewhere after school. Mm -hmm. There's five streams right there on top of your salary, right? So it's just about being exposed to it and having your knowledge and like having foresight to say, I, I can make something of yeah. this. It's like when we just had this conversation, yeah, of course. you got this show is already a stream of income, but it's two different ones, right? There's mm -hmm. an audio part and there's a visual part. You start by just having this platform, you got two streams. Two streams already. Now how do you make five more? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So literally vertical integration at its finest. That's what it's about. Yeah. So you guys kind of started with the podcast, right? So the podcast was like the nucleus. It's the mothership. Right? It's the mothership before all these other ancillary um, businesses and streams came about. So in terms of the podcast, like just so to put in context for the viewers, how many listeners do you guys actually have on a monthly basis? Uh, so right now we're at 4 million, about 4 million <sighs> listeners a month. Um, but that's something that was scaled. Yeah. Um, and it was understanding the landscape. And so when we started, mm -hmm. we used to put out one episode every Tuesday. Gotcha. And it was like, okay, we, you know, that started getting the traction. The buzz kept growing. We uh, got up to like the top 10 in the podcast charts and we didn't really understand what that was. Mm -hmm. And then iHeart reached out because they saw the buzz. Shout out to Charlemagne and Black Effect. They reached out. They were like, look, we're looking for some, something in the financial space, another partnership. Mm -hmm. Part of it was like, can you guys put out more content? And I was like, wow. yeah, I guess we can. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like we, we got a lot, of, a lot of content, a lot of knowledge that we haven't put out. Mm -hmm. So now instead of having one piece of content a week, we turn that into three, right? And so if I was doing 50,000 downloads on a Tuesday, I put out a piece of content on a Friday that gets about 30,000. Now I'm at 80. But if I get another 20 on my content on Sunday, now I'm 100,000 downloads mm -hmm. a week, right? That's 400,000 for the month mm -hmm. where I was only doing, if I put out that one episode, I was doing 200. So I doubled the amount of output. When I double the output, now the business increases because now people are looking at it like, this is a viable source. Mm -hmm. I want to put ad dollars on this. How do we get in contact with these guys? How can we advertise on their show? And once you understand that part of it, now it's like, oh, you become a, a, your own a, a sales agency. Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I have real estate on my show, mm -hmm. but people to now add, put advertising yeah. on. And those slots are worth something, those, right? Every slot is worth something. Mm -hmm. And you kind of dictate because you know your numbers. You, you should know them better than anybody else. And a lot of people don't study their analytics, but mm -hmm. you know that was something that early on we were like watching it from the first episode. Oh, we got 12, 1,200 listeners. Oh, but how do we get to three thousand? Mm -hmm. How do we? I remember telling my coworkers that well, if we get to twenty thousand downloads an episode, out. I'm out of here. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> whatever. And there was like twenty five thousand. It was like, where do you go? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's I, true. I, I told you I was out of here. <laughs> we hope you guys are enjoying this episode. Don't forget to click the link in our description for your free real estate investor guide. All right, now back to the schedule program.
<laughs> no, that's amazing. So I know you guys have been around a lot of billionaires from Don Peoples, Robert Smith, Mark Cuban. And, you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but my goal is always to get to that B, right? What is some characteristics or the most common characteristic that you guys have noticed from being around these individuals? Um, just their level of execution is just different. Like even Robert Smith. So if anybody is not familiar with Robert Smith, he's the richest black American that in American history. He's, I currently think he's currently worth $9 billion and um, he's in private equity. So when we met with him um, to, to do the interview, it was on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting because we meet a lot of, we, we interview a lot of rappers too. And not all of them do this, but a lot of them, they're late. Like, you know, you mm-hmm. do a three o'clock interview, they might come at like 3.30, 3.45, 4 o'clock. And um, so a few things struck me with Robert Smith. A, it was at seven o'clock in the morning on Friday, which is the earliest interview we've ever done, ever. He was there at 6.45. In a three-piece suit, and he already knew everything about us. Like he knew he was a teacher. He knew I was a financial advisor before this. Mm-hmm. All this. Once somebody from his team came at six thirty, just to kind of scalp the vibe out, you know, see if everything was straight. He pulled up at six forty-five, ready to go. So that to me spoke volumes because it's like, all right, he's already worth nine billion dollars. Mm-hmm. He's not only on time. He's early. And that's something I learned, like even playing basketball when I was a kid, when I was in school, like we would get in trouble. If practice started at three o'clock, we get in trouble if we come at three o'clock. Cause it's like, if you're on time, you're late. late. Like on time, it's early. Mm-hmm. Cause you gotta prepare. I, you can't just come in the gym and be ready to play. Mm-hmm. You gotta tape your ankle, you gotta stretch, you gotta do all of that. So being punctual is something that I learned early, but that's something that not a lot of people understand. So for him and like Don Peebles and all those, like Tyler Perry's another one. You know, Tyler Perry, and we had him at InvestFest, came early, came with like just three people, his security assistant, that's it. Like not coming with an entourage, not, and not asking, that's another thing. So rappers, if you have a book shows, and I don't want to bash rappers, but just making a comparison. If you book a rapper, you know, like they come with a long list of things that they need. And it's always liquor, like 10 (laughs) bottles of liquor for like 10 people. Like, and it's just like an assortment of champagne, tequila and all of that. Like that's what they have. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting because I've never booked a rapper. I think maybe styles, but most, I've never really booked the rapper outside of styles that didn't ask for liquor in his green room. That's like their request. So Don Peebles, two things I want to say. Tyler Perry, his request was fresh fruit, water, and like orange juice. Some wow. really basic stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don Peebles, his request, he didn't have a rider per se. His request was, I'll come, but I want to be introduced to Tyler Perry and Steve Harvey. Mm-hmm. So he understood that if I'm going to make a request, mm-hmm. I'm going to make a valuable request. Mm-hmm. Yes. The introduction to me is more valuable than yeah, a bottle, a bottle of champagne. Of liquor. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? So just the way that they're thinking mm-hmm. is completely different. They understand the power of relationships. Mm-hmm. They understand, like, you know, not to waste time. There's a variety of different things that you when you around people that that move at that that level, and they're all extremely efficient. Yeah, um, I mean, I just add to it the level of sacrifice. I mean, we, we like you said, we run into a lot of them. Some you didn't name, but the level of sacrifice that it takes to get to that level. I think that gets overlooked. Even mm-hmm. when in, in our journey right now, like people kind of just underestimate. They're like, oh, they're going to show up. They know we could, you know, they're going to show up every Monday. The episode's going to come out every Tuesday. They're probably going to travel to three cities every mm-hmm. week. The sacrifice that comes on the other side of that and to see them get to that point and understand like this is part of the process, it's, it's just different. You know what I mean? The, their level of commitment to excellence is different from everybody else. And this is why they reach those levels. But another thing is that I think every time we've run into somebody of that stature is the give back. Mm-hmm. It's like they've gotten to this point and they're looking at their legacies now. 
And they're like, yeah, we've made a billion, but like, what will we be remembered for? Mm -hmm. Like, who are we impacting? Who can we now educate to tell them mm -hmm. how to get to this point? And I feel like this is a perfect time for us because it's like we become the ladder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's a platform. You can actually tell the people mm -hmm. how they can get to this level. It becomes something now, especially like so for y'all to hear Don Peoples talk about the, you know, real estate and development. It's like, oh, wait, that's something I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I can add that to my portfolio. I can add that to my book of knowledge and now I can execute on it. You know what I mean? So it's just different. So those pieces are nuggets that, you know, we can't take for granted while we're in these moments. Mm -hmm. another, another thing about the billionaires is that they all said think bigger. So Tyler mm, Perry, scale. when I met Tyler Perry, he was, talk, was talking to him backstage at InvestFest and InvestFest. Last year we had 14,000 people. So we like, um, we want to make this as big as Essence Fest. If anybody knows Essence Fest, that's a huge festival in New Orleans. They get like 100,000 people to come. And when I told him, I'm like, this, the idea for InvestFest is to become as big as Essence Fest. And he was like, that's it? You got to think bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And he just said it like casually, like nonchalantly. He was like, you just got to think bigger than that. When we met Diddy, we met Diddy at his house and we was um, just all talking. And another one of our friends, he was, was doing a toast and he was like, um, let's toast to, he said something like, oh, everybody becoming a billionaire. And he like, that's not big enough. Mm. Like, that's not big enough. Like, I, I mean, like, and even Robert Smith, he, that's one thing he said in the interview. He was like, you got to think about how you can scale this thing. Like how you can scale it. Like all they think about is scale mm -hmm. bigger. Like, you know what I mean, so that's something that we picked up from all of the billionaires yeah. too. Like they never think on like just a regular level. Mm -hmm. Everything is like yeah. super big. And they watching, they know everything. Mm -hmm. Like they know everything. They, they, Before they we started right? that Robert Smith, Smith interview, he was telling us how to scale. He's like, I got this company that I just invested in. I mm -hmm. think you should partner with them. I think it'd be great. They have the, the a mobile application that would be great for your business. It can get to the kids. We can get to the schools. Y'all in schools, we can get you in school. Like wow. before we started the interview, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no coffee this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Smatted your mind. Yeah. Speaking of scale, I have this piece of paper here. Yeah. And it's the action plan that you wrote <laughs> back in 2019. So just talk to us about like the power of vision, like how from this piece of paper, you're now sitting in Toronto, you're touring the world, teaching financial literacy. Like, how did we get here? Like, what were the steps? Like how, what were the pitfalls? Like, what were the difficult moments and how do we arrive here? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, yeah, it all starts with a, a vision and a plan. So yeah, that was like when we first started the show and that was just like yeah. some steps that we needed to actually start the podcast. So it was basically stuff. Like, is a little shoddy. I know, that's why they call him shoddy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that penmanship is different. <laughs> but now watch the penmanship. <laughs> but it's, it's real though. Yeah, I, I'll touch you. Yeah, but I think, here. you know, whatever you do, you got to have a clear vision for it. Like, you know, if you don't have a vision for it, then it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Just a wish. Like, you know, if you say, okay, I'm just going to lose 30 pounds. But what's your plan to lose mm -hmm. 30 pounds? So it's like, all right, you know, this is what we want to do. But what are the steps to, to do that? So it's like, all right, now we got to reverse engineer it and really go through the blueprint of like, this is what we need. Like, mm -hmm. And I started that actually when I was in college, to-do list. I used to have to-do list every day. Like okay. a friend of mine put me on to that. And I used to physically write it down. Like today, like I, like I would write to-do list for today mm. and I would write down the list. And then as I evolved, I, um, as I became a financial advisor, I started using an app mm -hmm. and it was called G-Task. And I used to, for a long time, I was doing to-do list. Now, you know, fortunately, I got like my sister who's an assistant for us and different things. And so I don't have to physically have to-do list for myself, mm -hmm. just kind of delegate that to other people. But that's something that I did for like over 10 years. So I was already trained on like, like almost like a military way of thinking, gotcha. like, you know, as far as mm -hmm. like to have things written down and to cross them off like mm -hmm. old school. So when we was doing that, I'm like, all right, I just reverted back to the old habits that I had. Cause everything that you do is just reverse back to what you did yeah. when you was young. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's extremely important to establish good habits when you're young, mm -hmm. because it's extremely difficult to change your habits. So it's like, if you have bad habits as a child, nine times out of 10, those are going to continue as an adult. Mm -hmm. But if you can establish good habits in children, then even if, even if they lose some of it, ultimately it's in their core. Mm -hmm. So they're going to revert back to it on a certain point in time. It's like, you know, that's deep down in, the, in their system. So mm -hmm. learning that kind of stuff, having that type of discipline, like that was something I was always on. So when it was time to do the show, 
we put together that list and then yeah. that was just to get us started and then we've just been executing ever since. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I look at that list, it's, it's dope, but I mean, that's four years ago, right? And so think back about what are the things that are on that list. Figure out what microphones to use, mm -hmm. we had no clue. Figure out what app to use, we had no clue. Figure out what topics, we're just gonna figure this out. How do we tape? Where do we upload this? Figure out a name, no clue. Four years later, people are looking like, yo, these are the premier people in this yep. space, right? But we just had the wherewithal and the, the mental fortitude really like, yo, we're, gonna, we're doing this. Regardless. And we'll figure this thing out as we go, right? It was never like, yo, let's wait for the perfect time. Like even the name he has, is, that was the original name, Money, yeah. Money Power Respect. Money Power Respect. That was the name. That's what he wanted yeah. to name. It sounded like an album title. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the yeah, lot. That was the lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were just like, yo, even that, it was like, all right, you could tell this is the beginning stages of this, mm -hmm. but I always say like, yo, we were building the plane and we were flying it at the same time. Right, and to the point now, it's like, now you are the go-to people in the mm -hmm. space. Like, now we can give the advice. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't know any, I, I didn't listen to any podcast prior to doing mine. Mm -hmm. Like, we, I might've caught a couple, like, segments of somebody's, but never sat there and listened for three hours. Mm -hmm. It was like, yo, this is a brand new space, but we're gonna attack it like, we know how we attack everything else. Like, yo, we, are, we going hard? Or we going harder? Like, we not going home. Yeah. And so, like, that was part of the process. Like, we, we've done things before, and we've had a bond where things didn't work, all right? This was just another one that we like, all right, well, let's attack it. Mm -hmm. And it did work. It was about taking the action though, like that imperfect action. People talk about that, but that's real, mm -hmm. right? We didn't know how to use mics. We didn't know how to record. We had cell phones. I was recording, like we didn't even have the right frames per second. We trying to figure out how to upload 25 gigs off a phone when you can't even do that. You, can't. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, sometimes we record and like, Nobody press record. Yeah. You know, the mic didn't work. <laughs> we, made, we, yeah, we made that mistake once or twice. <laughs> this is it. But yeah. guess what? We put it out. Because uh -huh. we know what's more important than having it look perfect is about the content, about the, the content being yeah. as valuable as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we did, I remember we did one clip and like I'm talking and it's taping the back of my head. I'm like, oh wait, we can't put that angle. That's the we we taping the wrong way. Uh -huh. But these are things like people are watching us do it and make this mistake. So now it's like, oh, this becomes a blueprint of mm -hmm. what not to do. But also like, look how consistent they are when they do do it. Even though they make mistakes and the sound didn't sound great mm -hmm. and the visuals off, they still put it out. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. imperfect. Regardless, that's key. Jump out, build the parachute on the way down. It is. That's key. I think what you guys are a textbook definition of consistency and execution. And I think that's what separates people that are good and people that are great and excellent at what they do in their craft. Uh, my question is, in the Drink Champs interview you guys did, Legend, shout out to Nori. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Nori. Shout out to Nori. Yeah. Legendary yeah. interview. Our episode today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Five hours. <laughs> that was a, a legendary interview. Yeah. And uh, there was one point in the interview where you talked about how long money stays in communities. Right, and it's 28 days, I believe, in Asian communities, 18 days in the Jewish community, and in our community, it's, it's six hours. My question is, why do you think that is, and what can we do to change that? Man, um, so that's a very interesting and loaded question. I'm not really sure about the historical data here in, in Canada, but in America, it's you know, it was, it was systematically put in place to destroy the black economy from, you know, we had a thing called Black Wall Street, which was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which mm -hmm. is a, a, was self-sufficient economy mm -hmm. that was thriving. They burned it and, down. And um, it was bombs. That's yeah. actually the first, first bomb. Burning. The first bomb ever dropped on American soil was Black Wall Street. Yeah. It was on American citizens from the American government. So. Right. That's um, so it's so many different things. So that obviously doesn't ha doesn't help. Um, but then also, you know, from us, we have brought into a consumer mindset, not an entrepreneurship mindset. So we're comfortable with other people coming in our communities and opening stores where that's never normal. Like there's a Chinatown in every country in the world. And you've never seen a, I've never seen a black person have a store in Chinatown. No. I've never seen a white person with a store mm -hmm. in Chinatown. No, you know. I've only seen Chinese people with a store in Chinatown That's and nobody it. thinks about it. Yeah. Nobody thinks about Little Italy. There's always yeah. little somethings and in ty in towns. Every and, city. Mm -hmm. and it's normal that those people control those stores, the restaurants, mm -hmm. the banks, everything. But we don't have any area where it's just black people that control anything. So we've accepted that. 
So part of it is just, you know, normalizing in ourselves that it's okay to spend with each other. It's okay to stimulate each other's economies. It's better than spending with somebody else because nine times out of 10, if you spend with somebody that looks like you, they're gonna end up spending with somebody that looks like you as well. Mm -hmm. So now it keeps the dollar circulating and now you can actually build an economy. But if I always spend with somebody that's Italian, or if I always spend with somebody that's German, Jewish, whatever, they might be good people, but they're gonna spend it with their community. And rightfully so, that's what they're supposed to do. So it's like, we, we haven't fully understood that concept. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the problems why the dollar leaves our community so fast, because we don't have anywhere to spend it. Mm -hmm. Even if we want to spend it somewhere, like mm -hmm. if you live in a black neighborhood and there's no black stores, mm -hmm. You really have no other option. Yeah, there's only so many barber shops. Yeah, there's only so many. You, you know, can only cut your hair so many times a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, those, think about the businesses that we create. Like you said, mm -hmm. how scalable are those businesses? How many people's hair can I cut in a week? You know what I mean, how many different places can I be in my mm -hmm. community to do that service? So that's another part mm -hmm. of it. It's like we got to create scalable businesses in our communities. If you look, especially like in New York City, it's like we know there's going to be a liquor store, there's going to be a bodega, there's going to be a Chinese food store. And there's gonna be a church in between it, and that's on like every three blocks. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? How how many of these businesses can be scalable if that's the format, right? Or and I forgot there's gonna be a check cashing, mm -hmm. which we're probably not gonna own that either. You know what I mean? So when we're talking about keeping it in the community, where? Yeah, where's the community? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So um, our executive assistant did some digging, <laughs> and uh, according to this web publication, it said Showbiz Corner. Rashad has said your net worth was. 32 million as of, as of 2022. And then another publication, Authentic Facts. Troy oh, said, authentic Facts. Authentic Facts. Dot net. Troy said it was only a million, but I didn't believe that. Yeah, I didn't you know what's so crazy? You know what's so crazy? They believe the dirty, bro. I didn't believe that. I'm like, oh, no, he probably made that this month. Yeah, like, no, he's talking about, like. like now, nah, you know what's so crazy about that? So my son, um, my son is 12. <laughs> so he asked me about that. He was like, yo, um. Why is, why is your net worth so much higher than Uncle Troy? He's like, he only got a million, you got 30 million. Like, what, 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 what kind of split you guys got going on? Is it 50-50 or is it 90-90? Like, what's good here? Yeah, I'll yeah, take, they said that, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want no problem. I don't want the IRS looking, I'll take it. The internet, the internet is, a, is an amazing place. Bro. Yeah, all right, so speaking about, speaking about money, do you guys have a retirement number do you have a when you say like all right you know we're talking about thinking big and thinking small do you guys have a goal of like all right once i get to x amount of dollars per month or a x amount of net worth i'm gonna take my foot off the gas and i'm gonna you know chill on the beach somewhere or you know what i'm saying or are you guys gonna be torn until you're old and gray <laughs> yeah no i think um it's definitely you definitely gotta have an exit plan in place and you definitely got to have like a, a way to scale. Like you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So hopefully what we're doing now is not what we're going to be doing five years from now. Um, as far as the number is concerned, I think it's more of a, of a company. You know, I think we headed towards a billion dollar valuation as a company mm. and then multi-billion dollar valuation. So obviously once, if we get billion dollar valuation, everybody's going to have money, mm, of course. you know, so I, it's not really so much of like my own personal, I need this amount. It's like, all right, how do we get this publicly traded company to have a $50 billion valuation? And then we can just kind of figure it out from there. Yeah, and when it's a multi-billion dollar valuation, I want them to still say that my net worth is a million. <laughs> 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 just for tax purposes. <laughs> yeah, but I, even the, the thought of retirement has changed. I used to have that mindset where it was like, yo, if I hit this number, if I hit this number, I'll be good. I've earned my leisure when I get to this number. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, I think this retirement is a mindset, right? Because what we do is educate, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'll always be educating in some form, whether mm -hmm. it was in the classroom or whether it's now through social media and through earning your leisure. I feel like that was my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Like you can't retire from your purpose. Yeah. Like you, this is what God has sent you here to do. Mm -hmm. And so the, I don't know if there's a number, it might look different, right? Like, uh, like you said, when you become 10, 20 years down the line, it's a full-fledged media company. Mm -hmm. Now the company runs. Right, and we just make we oversee it, and again, having an exit plan is important. But I don't, I don't really, I never think of retirement because I feel like I'm always going to be educating it somehow, mm -hmm. whether it's with mm -hmm. in the masses or if it's a one to one or if I'm in a community and I'm speaking to young kids or young adults. There's always going to be a need for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy because Shadi, remember yesterday you're telling me about 
how Damon Dash said, I don't take vacations because my life is a vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, is that how you guys feel? Like, this is what you love to do. So this, so it doesn't even feel like work. Yeah, for sure. Like that, that, that clip resonated with me so much because that's like, that's really how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't really taken like a vacation in a very long period of time. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we blessed. Mm -hmm. Like, even just being up here, like, you know what I mean? Getting to play at the Raptors facility. And I, mm -hmm. even my son, he, I was talking to him today and I'm like, you know, he's like, every trip, he's like, every trip is kind of like a vacation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is if you really think about it because we get to meet cool people, we get to do cool things, we get to, you know, catch the vibes, learn the culture, different things of that nature. That's what really vacations are. So mm -hmm. every time, that we go anywhere is like a vacation for me. I, that's, how, that's how I think about it, mm -hmm. that's how I feel. So yeah, I felt Dane when he said that. It's like, I don't take a vacation, my life is a vacation, mm -hmm. like, that's real. Yeah, it's a, it's a life, man, mm -hmm. <laughs> it really is. I mean, we get to travel, we get to meet new people, we get to see impact, which most people never get to see, right? Like you might be doing something in your neighborhood and mm -hmm. you never really know what, who's, who's affected. And we actually get to see it in real life and see people's lives change. Um, it's one of the, these things, man, like, especially with a family, a wife and kids, it's like the sacrifice that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that the easiest part is they understand that, but they get to have the luxuries of, of that sacrifice. But uh, Rich Lou Dennis, who's the, the head of uh, at Vestas, he was like, look, rest. If I can mm -hmm. give you any bit of advice, rest. rest. And so having that mind in the back of my mind, it's like people see us doing all these things and it looks cool and it's great and we love it. He was like, just make sure every now and then that you just rest because you need to be refreshed mm -hmm. every time you go somewhere. So like when we in Toronto, this is gonna be the first time they seeing us, we gotta be on. Mm -hmm. uh, so figure out how you're gonna get that and manage that and put that inside of what you're doing. So would you say earning your leisure is a constant process? I think so. I think so because everybody's threshold for freedom is different. It really is earning your freedom, mm -hmm. right? Like do you have the ability to do what you want without having to worry about the monetary uh, outcome, gotcha. right? So like, we're always in the pursuit of that. I feel mm -hmm. like everybody has a different level of earning leisure, which is why I think the name resonated with so many people. It was like, oh, am I earning my leisure, mm -hmm. right? Somebody might be, might be in their nine to five and you know what, they're earning their leisure, right? It's giving them free, some freedoms that mm -hmm. they didn't have if they didn't have that nine mm -hmm. to five, right? We as entrepreneurs, it looks a lot different, right? People don't get to see the day to day that goes into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot tougher mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, but there's the other end of the spectrum is like, yo, we get to do things like this. Like, I don't know when spring break is and I don't have to be somewhere for lunch at one o'clock. And I don't have, you know, I'm looking at my periods on my schedule, like how many classes I got, it's, it's, there's a difference um, to my leisure now. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a constant pursuit of, of that, that freedom that, that people so, sought out. At what point was it that you guys knew that you guys were the biggest ever? <laughs> I feel like, you know, the biggest ever. So the tagline originally was the, it, we started using the biggest. Um, but sometimes you just need separation. Mm -hmm. So it was like, all right, what about ever? Throw it out there, see what yeah. happens. Yeah. And no pushback. People were, yeah, no pushback. Yeah. 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 Who's, who's, who's willing to challenge? Yeah, we good. We good. We good. We good. We good. We good. Say no more. That's, yeah. that's hip hop. Like, yeah. I used to argue that. Like, I'm telling you, like, he'd be like, yo, T.I. said you're the king of the South. Yeah. Who's willing to challenge? No one challenges him. And then Willow Wayne says, I'm the best rapper alive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You are. Self proclaimed. Yeah. yeah. You are. But I, I feel like the biggest ever, it's not so much like, you know, it's not so much to just self praise, but it's really just to say like, you know, the way that we've been able to curate the information and to do it at scale and to do it, you know, with the taste that we've done it at, it's never really been done before. Hmm. So it's more like a, you know, historical, everything we do is history. Mm -hmm. So it's more, you know, of that standpoint, as opposed to like, you know, we don't want to like be bragging, like, you know, we're bigger than this person, bigger than that person, but we don't really look at any person as like what we're doing. Cause yeah. what, we've, what we've done, like we just kind of created our, yeah. our own lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's like, all right, being that, you know, we're pioneers in the space, the biggest ever. <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah, that, that was the humblest shot he's gonna be today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's, it's real, man. Like, 
you got to think about this. We didn't come into this this space. Like this space, we didn't see anybody in this space, right? So it wasn't we, like we could use somebody as reference. Mm -hmm. We didn't come in with somebody who co-signed us. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a, a rap label was like, yo, you got this guy. And then mm -hmm. like, here comes the other study. Mm -hmm. and it was like, no, these are the guys. Yeah, Take it, learn from it. Hopefully it impacts your life. And while we're doing it, let's put other people on so they can share their brilliance, mm -hmm. right. which was what the missing piece was for a lot of us as far as financial education. It was like, there's a certain amount of people who have the information, but they never really delivered it to the, mm -hmm. to the masses, yeah. right? And so and it was like, it. wait, if we have that opportunity, we definitely should do that. Mm -hmm. And so if there's somebody who's doing amazing things in real estate, let's give him a platform mm -hmm. or her the platform to share her expertise. If there's somebody that's doing amazing in the stock market or investing, let's give him the platform mm -hmm. to share the expertise. And you do that over and over, you're learning from the information, but mm -hmm. now the audience is learning from the information. And now they're aspiring to be other things than the traditional things we thought mm -hmm. were the pathway to success, right? Entertainment, sports, mm -hmm. selling drugs, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, look at all these things that the people that came on the show have done and have been successful at. Yo, throw a dart. You can probably do any of them, mm -hmm. right? But it's going to take some some sacrifice. It's going to take some consistency and some dedication to do it. But it's there. The information is there. One hundred percent. And it's like honestly, like you guys lay the blueprint for us. And I'll be honest, this is a, a full circle moment. Right? <laughs> uh, well, it's very very full circle mm -hmm. because it's like when we saw what you guys were doing, and we're like, there's nobody here in Canada doing this. And it's like you guys are cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys aren't cornballs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys are actually, like, you know, you guys are the culture. And what you guys are doing with edutainment, you know what I mean? Even just creating that concept, Invest Fest, selling out Madison Square Garden. Yeah, like, the game. I never could rap or play basketball. So I thought, like, I was done for. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's I'm it. like, me, like, it's like, what am I going to really do? You know? But. <laughs> really and truly man this is a, a real full full circle mm -hmm. moment for us and just so you know like i told you guys at dinner yesterday man you guys are not only inspiring us you guys are inspiring generations mm -hmm. and what you guys are doing right now is going to have a ripple effect for the next 100 150 mm -hmm. years just like that bottle of louis that, that we were sipping <laughs> yeah, on last yeah, night yeah. you know what Don't i'm saying go it's, you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's gonna have a ripple effect yeah, you know yeah. so i just want to say that this is a full circle moment Last question before we wrap up. Dinner with Drake or a million dollars? <laughs> million. It keeps the number keeps going higher and higher. Yeah. Um <laughs> I see the soldier boy joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, What's the Soldier Boy joint? They said what was it? Two fifty. Two hundred and fifty dollars or yeah, E B T what was it? No, it was or, or food stamp cards. Food stamp I card. saw that. I saw that. <laughs> like they took stamp. the food stamps. No, they doing the dirty. <laughs> Don't disrespect our guy. He's they a genius. Do, they do. Yo, he's he a came out with the ringtone. Genius. Yeah. Oh, he came out with the ringtone. Yeah, he got offended by it, but that's our guy. Shout out to Soldier Boy. Shout out to Soldier Boy. Um, shout out to Drizzy. I feel like that question because it was Jay, and you know they put different people on it, and I feel like um, what that really boils down to is the power of relationships, right? So it's like I said it with um, nineteen keys. And Ian, it's the same thing, but we was on FaceTime with Keys and I'm like, all right, you could probably put a price tag on earn your leisure and 19 Keys relationship. Like I'm sure a mathematician can kind of break it down and, and see how much money it. has actually been made from mm -hmm. us working together in the last couple of years. So, okay. But what's, what's the relationship value for the next 10 years? You, mm -hmm. you, you really can't do that, can't right? That, like you man. can't put a price, who knows what that is going to go into, mm -hmm. right? So that's the power of relationships to me. Not necessarily what has happened or what could happen right now. What could happen in 30 years, mm. right? So that's how I look at in relationships is invaluable. It's like, it's like if you have a wife, how much would you sell your wife for, right? It's priceless. Exactly. Mm. It's like how much would you sell your kids for? Like you can't put a price on, on a relationship because you never know. Mm -hmm. Now, some relationships don't amount to anything, but... That's also a lesson in that. So the lesson actually might be in value. Worth more, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you look at that, people make money. Money don't make people. So ultimately, everybody to me, is a, it's a priceless relationship. It's a priceless transaction because I don't know what, I, what I'm going to get from a person, what they're mm -hmm. going to get from me, how this is going to turn out. And that's really been our journey, even coming up here. Like this is all relationships. Like this meet one person, to another person, to another person, to another person. 
these things, some things your money can't buy. So I think that people really need to look at it from that standpoint where we could put prices on different things, but never put a price on a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because once you put a price on a relationship, you devalue the relationship. 100%. And then it's not it's not worth anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when you got a value add. Yeah. I think that's, that's the other part of it. Like there's a value add. So if you're asking us at this point, it's going to be the dinner, right? Sure. Because there's a value add, especially for for a guy like Drake, right? Like, and I think I had this conversation earlier. It was like, yeah, we would love to hit, have him on to talk business. Mm -hmm. How many times has he had the opportunity, right? Most times you do that circus, like, what's the album? Mm -hmm. Tell us the lead single. Mm -hmm. Who's featured on it? Let's move on. Same yeah, thing. let's talk about the Pusha T beef. Yeah. Let's talk about the Meek Mill but track. I, we come here and it's like, wait, the OVO Center? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure some of these buildings he's got a, you know, his hands in on these. 100%. But like, who's having that conversation mm -hmm. with him? Sure. And you so see a, his crib too on Bridal Path. It's, it's heavy. That's uh, Can we call it the crib? Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can call it a crib. I don't even know what the other call it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, beyond in the state, but yeah. it's like... It's called the embassy? That's a better word yeah, for it. Called it. Embassy. The embassy, yeah. yeah so it's like, embassy. yo, there's a there's a space for that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that would be a great value at, yeah. uh, for both for both sides. He gets to have that discussion in a long format, and the people get to hear like, yo, mm -hmm. this is not just music. This is one of the, the best businessmen that the country's for sure ever seen, but sure. maybe sure. the music industry will ever see. One hundred percent. Before before we close, I want to applaud you guys for how you put on your people. Mm. And we've been around you guys for the last few days and we've seen how you guys move. And then just more people come sh <laughs> are showing up. Just uh, more big guys, yeah. more beards. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> they, like they really have their people close to them. Yeah. Tell us quickly about like how important it is to put your people in position rather than looking outside. Yeah, if you don't make them an asset, they're going to become a liability. Oof. Like, you know, so right. that's something that you got to figure out for yourself to say, okay, like, you know, I'm not just going to give somebody money, but I will give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And now what you do with the opportunity is up, to, up to you. you. Right? But it's like, okay, if we got to work with people, if we got to hire people, it's beneficial for us to hire people that we know. Like, it's beneficial for us to work with family. Mm -hmm. It's beneficial for us to work with people that's from our community, from our neighborhood, because why not? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So that's something that we always just thought early on. And it's, it's grown into what it's grown into now. Um, but that's really the, the mindset of it. Is like, you know, once again, going back to the group economics thing, like, you know, if I stimulate your economy, you can stimulate my economy. Mm -hmm. Now we stimulate each other's economy. Now we all grow together. And now, you know, it's a whole movement as opposed to just one person. Nobody becomes great by themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a collective. So if you get people to buy into it and get people to understand their position and their role and to, you know, do the best that they can do. Now, if we all are on one accord, now we can really make history. So that was the whole the whole thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's a blessing that we've been able to to do that. Fair. Amazing. Listen, we know you guys gotta get ready for the back to back shows. <laughs> we ain't gonna hold you up no more. <laughs> but we appreciate you guys coming to sit down with us. We excited for the show tonight. Yeah. You know, we got we got our tickets as soon as they <laughs> you know, as soon as they went out. So we were we well prepared, yeah. you know. And we got the whole fam. We coming deep. And y'all pulled up. That's part of it too. We we talk about being in the right place. Like Carnegie Hall, y'all had a whole conglomerate of people. Yeah, we came like, twenty deep. Yo, I was like, yo, it was Toronto. Y'all got to come to Toronto. I walked to the bar. Nah, y'all got to come to Toronto. Like I'm like, yo, yo, they took over this whole room. I'm like, yo, you know we coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's it. Like y'all, y'all knew it was an opportunity. Like yo, they're gonna be here. This opportunity to get in front of them. Let's show them like yo, they mean something to us. And I was like, yo, this is great. Mm -hmm. And y'all. I mean, we talk about hospitality. This is this has been incredible, man. So shout out to y'all. No, you did the right yeah. thing. But, <laughs> and that's why I tell people all the time, it's like people network from a selfish standpoint. A lot mm -hmm. of times it's like, what can you do for me? And that's more charity. But, you know, you guys, not only did you show up in New York, but you provided a tremendous amount of value. Mm -hmm. So it's just the law of reciprocity that when you do things for other people, it's going to come back to you. And sometimes you don't even know how it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate the hospitality. Um, but I think that that's a lesson that I don't want people to, yeah. forget either is that you know it's important to find a way to add value because by finding a way to add value now you become valuable yeah and the more valuable you are now it just automatically attracts success to mm -hmm. you yeah so you guys definitely doing it the right way and um we definitely appreciate the hospitality this has been an amazing trip so far 
And we definitely looking forward to the yeah, show yeah. tonight for sure. So shout, appreciate shout, that. shout out to the whole team. Shout out to Franz. He was the, the first dude from Toronto. Yes, 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 in yes. 2019, he pulled up on us in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, that's a we, fact. We had, I mean, this is like our first event. And he was looking at us. He was like, yo, y'all got to come to Toronto. Back then. 2019. Wow. And then he just kept showing up Foresight. at every event. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, yo, this dude is really serious about this. Yeah, shout out to Fresh. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the, the first person when we got off that plane, he was there waiting for us. Like, mm. we're waiting for this moment. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So when we saw the Carnegie Hall, like, I didn't recognize y'all faces, but I recognized his. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, he, y'all with him? All right, so y'all must be good people because mm -hmm. we always see him. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it, man. It's just about show, like networking. And having relationships and not knowing, like, yo, yeah. that became the face that was familiar to us. But it was like, all right, he rock with them. Uh, these must be solid dudes, too. But mm -hmm. And y'all turned out to be even you know, more solid than we thought, man. Yeah. So, again, shout out to y'all. Appreciate that. That means a lot. Shout out, friends. Yeah. All right, listen, we ain't going to hold you guys up. We're going to let you guys get ready for the show. Once again, thank you guys for your time. Nothing but love. Nothing yeah, yeah, but respect. Yeah. To the biggest sure. OGs. To the biggest ever. You know? Way, way, way up. Way, way up. Way, <laughs> way, way up. Way, way, way up, man. But... <laughs> This is, that's a wrap. Love, bro. There you have it. We hope you guys enjoyed this amazing episode of Millennials to Millionaires. Don't forget to click the link in the description to claim your free real estate investor guide. This is something that's amazing for anyone to have. If you're planning on getting into the market, this is something that you don't want to miss out on. Click the link below. It's free. <laughs>